So here we are with Luke Radowski, the supreme. Hey, can I just ask, how the flip old are you? 26. 26, you see? One of the most important journalists the world has ever produced, and he's only 26. He's putting us all to shame. Luke I don't Radowski. think I'm that important. But. Well, I think, I, I th I've watched every single one of your films. I think, think, I think you're important. Thank you. Now, Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> what was the question I wanted to ask you? Uh, Kissinger. Yeah. Yeah? Did he have a big bit of blurb all over his shirt? Yeah, he had food. Was he dribbling? Under shirt, yeah. <laughs> dribbling a little bit. He definitely was. And he seemed to he seemed to attack you and the previous one, he seemed to attack you for Memorandum yeah. 200. Now, how did that happen? I mean, he said, he said, uh, oh, don't be disgusting to you. Yeah. Whereas he was the fucker who wrote it. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that. Oh, no, oh, they're not here. Oh, it's okay, I can say what the fuck I like. <laughs> <laughs> We're free! <laughs> So what was the question? I can't even remember now. Rewind. <laughs> yes, um, no, yeah, he seemed to be annoyed at you. I mean, it's a bit much, isn't it? He's talking about killing 80% of the world's population and he's pissed off with you. Well, whenever you bring truth to power, whenever you raise issues that the mainstream media never talks about, whenever you just go up face to face with them, it, it is a shocking moment for people. And different people react differently. Some blabble on, some stutter, some run away, some call security, some call the cops, some try to have me arrested. Yeah. But Kissinger's take on it is just to answer back with as much anger and hate as he can, uh, which kind of shows you what, what kind of person he is. I kind of feel like he's uh, putting uh, putting out his own uh, description of what he thinks he did onto myself. I mean, he told me to go to hell. That's he right. told me I'm a disgusting uh, person. Uh, he, he told me I'm a coward, even though That's I came right. up to you him. That's right, you came up to him and he called of, you a coward. In front of the top military and police branch all over with, with police everywhere. And just like the glasses. State police everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> it, definitely, it definitely was nerve wracking doing that. Now tell but, me, what's, what was the thing that actually got you into all of this? I mean, I presume yeah. it was 9-11 as it got most of us yeah. going, what the hell are they doing to us? Um, what, what, what was the moment that was... Yeah. I hope they're not taking me away from that. No, it's okay. Tell when me about that. When please. I was 16, 17, I was beat up by the police yeah. in New York City. Right. Uh, it was kind of right after 9-11. And after waking up to that, the police specifically told me, you know, the police and lawyers and, and judges and people told me there's no videotape, so it never happened. Ever since then, I, I always was smart about things and always had a video camera on me at all times and always documented everything and always researched and kept an open mind after that because I knew things weren't like they were supposed to be. There wasn't really any form of justice. There wasn't any form of repercussion for people who do bad. So the only way to do something about it, especially at my young age, was to step up and instead of just complaining and whining about it, I wanted to do something about it. Because, you know, we could complain and moan and talk about the problems and be depressed and be angry all day, but it's not going to change a damn thing unless you individually within yourself decide to actually be proactive, do something positive, uh, go and make a difference, make a change in the world, and it all begins with you deciding that for yourself. Fantastic. And uh, one of the films that I really liked wasn't really a political film. Uh, it was you on the subway. The Just Keep Going video, Just yeah. Keep Going video, which I thought was really heartwarming and, uh, and quite delightful. Uh, where did the idea for that come from? And uh, are you going to yeah. make any other kinds of things like that? Cause, well, uh, that, that video is, a, is like a one-of-a-kind video. I made it because I was extremely depressed. Okay. And I was going through a lot of hardships in my life right now, very personal things. Just one of the most difficult times, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, you know, I was just like crying like for months. And just one day, you know, just sitting on the subway, I was just miserable and I just decided to stop being miserable and just walk up to these people. I had my camera, just randomly did it. And uh, after making that video, it changed my life and it made my, you know, it made my life for the better. And it brought things into my life and perspective into my life uh, that just made me understand it's really your reaction that matters more than anything else in this world. It's how you uh, respond to things, it's how you take things, it's how you approach things that matter most. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, I'm not going to let anyone, anything, or any globalist take away my freedom, my happiness, and my spirit. Yeah, and when you met Tony Belair and you said, don't you think that the Bilderberger is a, a bit of a conflict of interest? Yeah. He said, yes. <laughs> yes, Surprise. it's a bit of a... It's a, bit of a yeah. So, uh, I mean, we, we, I, I nearly fell off my chair when I saw that. Same I mean, here. I was, I, was, I was interviewing and I, and I was like, what do I say next? Like, well, he just told me everything I wanted to know. So it was, it was definitely, definitely an awkward situation. My friend told them off later yeah. a little bit. Uh, my friend Matt. Uh, but it was just a surprise.
surreal, uh, <laughs> surreal interview because Tony Blair in Parliament specifically said he never attended Bilderberg. He did he really? Well, he, okay. In Parliament he is on record saying he never ever attended Bil the Bilderberg meeting. Okay. Then he told me he did. So right. that means he admitted to lying to Parliament. And the matey boy who, I can't remember his name, uh, American names, but the matey boy who uh, got Clinton in. Uh, who interviewed him? Bur Vernon Jordan. He denied that Obama had been there when yeah. Obama and Hillary Clinton, Clinton had gone on the year just yeah. uh, just before he got elected. That's right, isn't yeah. it? We all know that. Yeah, uh, there's a big story of how Obama actually sent the whole press corps um, away, yeah, away in an airplane. He promised that he was going to be in the airplane. They sent him away, and then he was right, right in Chantilly, Virginia, right when the Bilderberg meeting was happening in 2008. Hillary, Hillary was also gone. There was no. Uh, pictures or videos and she was also in that same Virginia area so it only makes sense when these two people are running for the top seat of the global US Empire it only makes sense that they're going to be a part of the global controllers and meeting with them and talking to them at Chantilly, Virginia so uh, you know it's still there's nothing definitive saying that they were there but all signs point to yes